Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Uh, it is September 10th, and this is uh, your live Q&A. We will go for 60 minutes. Uh, I would love to hear from you. I would love to say hello. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. That is what makes this channel grow. A uh, couple of things I want to talk about here. I want to talk about the housing market freezing as we head into winter. I want to talk about uh, my goals of the channel and see what's going on. Uh, why my um, why my channel is not for everyone. I want to talk about uh, why uh, you know I've gotten in a cadence of creating a lot of videos. I of course want to celebrate Dion uh, for once again uh, just not only re not only recording the audible for this book, which is amazing. Dion did the editing, and uh, I can only imagine the amount of time editing for the high quality standards uh, for Audible um, is is amazing. So, do me a favor, folks. If if you happen to get the book on Audible, uh, let's send Dion some love. Uh, if you could do a review and let uh, let everybody know that uh, the narrator was amazing. Uh, I think we've got to show some love to Dion and, and give back where we can. So um, pretty amazing stuff. So let's talk about the housing market freezing as we head into winter. Uh, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. If you followed my channel for the last six to nine months, you know I've been calling for a housing slowdown. Uh, the slowdown is here. The crash in transactions is happening. It's happening pretty much as expected. Right as we have called on this channel, which is amazing. Uh, I think it gets worse from here. Uh, I did some math, really kind of, I don't know, very high level, simple math, meaning like, yeah, very simple math. And I was trying to figure out what happens to rates if, right, this is a big if, if the Fed funds rate gets to 4% by the end of the year. So I break down all this math in the daily financial news this morning. Again, if you want to look that up, there's a playlist called uh, Financial News. It's September 10th. Look that up. But basically, if we get uh, the Fed funds rate at 4% and we have the same ratios from Fed funds to 10-year, 10-year to 30-year mortgage, we could have owner OCK, 30-year money, best credit, best down, you know, 20% down at 8%. That is not, not what I'm calling for. Frankly, it's not what I'm hoping for. Uh, but it is also not out of the realm of possibilities. 8% is possible. And you can watch the daily financial news to see how I get there. It's very simple kind of, hey, if we start here and we take today's, today's margin and add it, you get to 8%. It's, it's eye-opening and frightening. Frightening. The reason I say it's frightening is uh, hopefully by now you've heard all of us talk about how June, June was the start of this, right? We And, and we got the report on July 20th, like I told you we would, right? July 20th is going to go down as the day that the market changed. It was because we, the National Association of Realtors reported the June data and it was bad, bad, bad. That caused what we just had, right? A, a rush of listings, buyer retreats, all this stuff. That was in June. Seasonally speaking, June is an amazing month for housing. Amazing. Like top one, top two, amazing month. If we had rates at 6% crush June, can we imagine what happens at 7 or 8 in the winter? Everything that crushed June collapses freezes. I don't even know all the adjectives. I wish the lumberjack was here. His vocabulary is far better. It's going to be bad. It's going to be ugly. And again, mainly transactions. We are already seeing more and more supply leave the market. Again, a lot of crash channels or prognosticators were expecting inventory to rise in winter. Well, as I've told you, that's not going to happen. We have seen inventory fall the last four weeks. Think about that. Inventory is going down. 
We got the spike after July 20th, like I said we would, but you and I had to figure out what part of that new supply was wish pricing. Why is that important? Well, listing a property costs nothing or nearly nothing. If you have a 400 house and you want to list it at 500 and you find a licensed realtor, you can get it listed at 500 and it will just sit and sit and sit. That counts as inventory. I shared with you that I thought a lot of people, perhaps as much as 20% would be wish pricing. Looks like it might be more. So again, as I sit here today, you've heard me say before, winter is coming, folks. Winter is here. We're basically at the middle of September. You've heard me say in past videos that by September 15th, we're really going to see what we have. And folks, I don't have good news. I think we are seeing record demand destruction, and it will get worse. We are seeing record supply destruction, and it will get worse. We just shared with you Sacramento data this morning. Sacramento is one of the top, I don't know, 15, 20 markets in the country. It is often quoted as a market that will crash. Folks, in August, uh, transactions were down 26.2%, certainly a crash. Anything over 20%, crash in my book. Certainly within a calendar year, which these numbers are, August to August, down 26%. Days on market, up 81%. Folks, days on market, going to get worse. Days on market in Sacramento, up 81%. Days on market in most, most markets are going up. They're going to go up. They're gonna, we're going to see triple digit days on market increases. It's going to be bad. Months of supply. Months of supply in Sacramento. If I was a uh, fear monger, I would simply tell you months of supply in Sacramento went up 132%. Oh, my God. That's actually not that bad. We went from 0.89 months supply to two months supply, 2.07. Again, all of these numbers to give full credit where credit is due went Ryan Lundquist. He is Sacramento appraiser, a Sacramento appraiser blog. Uh, he is a great follow on Twitter. Again, these are his numbers, not mine. Uh, do yourself a favor and follow Ryan. So again, folks, uh, I think as you look at the market, again, all of these, whether they are national or markets, you you know, markets you don't look at, please remember if you're if you're a one rental at a time follower or fan, please have your buy box, have it be tight, and track it every day. For example, my market is Fresno, California, as hopefully all of you, or at least most of you know. I don't look at Fresno, California, right? In the beginning, I looked at one zip code, one asset type, three or four bedrooms between 1,700 and 2,000 square feet. I forget, some size. Um, yeah, so again, these are, um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be bad, but again, I want people to hear me because I I have a very negative or scary feeling about the winter, but you have to remember that's my macro view. Micro, I am vibrating with excitement. I am vibrating with excitement because I know I have been here before. I know that if I continue doing the daily work that I will find those op opportunities. I know I might have to write 30, 40, 50, 60 offers. I don't care. We are going we are going to deploy less cash and get more deals, higher yield in the next 12 to 18 months. That's an amazing feeling. That is what one rental at a time is, right? I have a course, I don't talk about it a lot, called How to Get Started One Rental at a Time. It is 100% about focus, daily discipline, growing your network, learning the ball. It's, it's a simple, straightforward course that is now helping over 2,000 people move forward. It includes for free access to a private Facebook group, which when this call ends, I will go talk to. Small, intimate. And we do Saturday deep dives where you get to interact with other experts. And I charge a whopping $319. I have had many a consultant and whatnot uh, prod me, beg me. To significantly raise the price, I'm not going to. We will raise it slightly probably once a year as more stuff gets added. 
but it is without question life-changing. How to get started one rental at a time, plus the private Facebook group, plus the Saturday deep dives, plus all the extra free and amazing bonus content. It's life-changing stuff. If, this is a huge if, if you, you right there, sorry, I'm pointing at you. You know who you are. Yes, you. Sorry, that was a joke. Um, If you're willing to do the work. If you're not willing to do the work, save your money. Save your money. But I have to tell you, we are entering, again, I've been very clear, probably the second best buying opportunity of my 22 years. There's no question that 2010 was better and likely will be the best year ever. But 2023, I am fairly confident because I do the work every day and I see the market changing already, will be the second best year of my investing career. If you want somebody, that'll tell you the straight skinny, give you the spreadsheets, give you the math, give you access to all this stuff, plus interact with you nearly daily. You, um, you gotta, I mean, you gotta buy the course. I mean, I don't, I, I talk about it so infrequently cause I don't want to be seen as somebody who's just a course seller. I just know it changes lives. I get notes almost every day. It just is. It just does. So I got a couple of super chats. I wanted to make sure to give those acknowledgements. Ryan, uh, thank you very much. Lexi says hi, and thank you for the book. You got it. Uh, amazing. Glad she uh, glad she's enjoying it. Nathan, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Dion and Zuber, for the second audio book. Again, I don't... this book, 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires, I can't say this enough. I wrote this book for you. One rental at a time, which I think has like 15,000 purchases. That was written for me, selfishly. One rental at a time. Sorry, I'll get it. I have a copy on my desk. This one, I wrote this book for me. I am thrilled. I'm happy. We now have over 1,000 Amazon reviews. I'm glad you all enjoy it. But it is one story. It is our story, and ours meaning Olivia and I about what happened after we read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That second book, I tried to write my second book for almost a year, and nothing felt right. It wasn't until I appreciated and remembered and saw on my bookshelf this one, and more specifically, Portraits of a Millionaire. That's what he called them, um, Gary Keller, Portraits of a Millionaire. They're a page or a page and a half. I'm like, you know what? We can do better. And now Dion, blood, sweat, tears, aggravation. Getting a book published on Audible to Audible standards is not easy. It's not easy. He um, he did it. And when he, I have to tell you this. I don't know that Dion knows this. When Dion offered to record the Audible version of 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires, I was, of course, honored, thrilled, but a little voice in the back of my head because I tried to get my first book published and couldn't. It was too hard. I was going, man, I I hope he knows what he's signing up for. That's, That's some heavy lifting. And let's be very clear. I would have been okay if Dion came back to me after six, nine, 12 months and said, Michael, sorry, man, I tried too hard. I'd have been like, no problem, buddy. I get it. Thank you for trying. The the guy recorded like the first six or seven chapters. We tried to get Audible to look at him. He had to throw them all away. Dion, you are my hero. I have have no words. No words. No words. So, again, uh, Nathan, thank you for the recognition. We all should should give Dion love. Um, We should all do reviews. Let him know how much we appreciate it. It was just amazing. And again, folks, remember today is for you. So ask questions, say hello. I will go right to the top. Unless there's a super chat, I will do the super chats first. Uh, but I will say hi to everyone. The, er, the sooner you are in, uh, the more likely um, uh, I will get to them. And Dion with the super chat. Marines aren't smart enough to quit. <laughs> My dad would agree. <laughs> My dad is a jarhead. Uh, hoorah. And uh, yeah, he would agree with you. So that's, that's, 
If you're a Marine, that you probably are laughing right now. If you're if you know Marines, you're probably laughing right now. If you don't know any Marines, get to know a Marine. They're pretty good people. So, yeah, pretty funny. The last thing I want to talk about is my channel. I have seen as the channel grows and we get more followers, which thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm very, very appreciative. Some people don't understand. And some people have said, Michael, you're spamming videos. Michael, you're TMZ. Michael this, Michael that. You know, we put out six, six or seven new videos seven days a week. That's the average. That's 50 videos a day. I want to talk about why and how I would consume it. Right? One rental at a time, first and foremost, is not me. Most YouTube channels are one person. Um, you know, meet Kevin, Graham Stephan, Tom Nash. They're one person. They're one personality. Hopefully, if you watch one rental at a time for more than five seconds, you realize, gosh, well, Michael might be the host and he might be on screen the most. This is really a channel with seven, eight, nine, ten millionaires. So one rental at a time is not a single voice and never will be. Like this book and like these stories, these 15 different stories, one rental at a time, if I were to consume the channel, I would figure out which experts I click with. I have no, I know for a fact that I would not click with all of the experts, right? If I was watching one rental at a time, I'd be like, hey, I like this person. I don't like that person. Or, hey, I am, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm on the East Coast, not the West Coast. I like this person. I like that person. I'm trying to, I'm trying to flip. I'm trying to buy and hold. I'm trying to syndicate. I'm trying to do, one rental at a time roster of millionaires was once again put together for you. I have tried to diversify. I've tried to add um, a, a mix of experts. I'm, I'm constantly adding. Uh, we needed more female voices, obviously. Uh, Beth was gracious enough to join our roster on Tuesdays. Um, you know, again, if you feel like I'm spamming you, I'm sorry. Uh, certainly not my intention. Uh, hopefully you've realized, you know, we, we cover relevant topics every day. We cover relevant things that are in the news. Um, I just know, I I have no impression that somebody should watch all my content. I think that would be hard. It would be really hard. I think, again, I think you watch the daily financial news. I um, I think that's a must, frankly, whether you watch it live at 7.30. I try to do it at the same time so you can schedule it, obviously with Thursday being an exception. I think that's a must watch. And then I think you find your, your experts that you click with. That's how I would consume my content. Um, I'm trying to create a movement um, that, again, lives 50 years after I'm gone. And um, the last thing I would say is some of you have commented recently, while, you know, Michael is the hardest working retired person I know. I, I want to make this clear. The moment this feels like work, I'll stop showing up. You have no idea how much fun I have talking with all my friends, right? These folks may have came, come on the channel as strangers. Uh, but they are all now friends, and, and most of them I communicate with outside of our weekly conversations. You have no idea how how awesome it is to be able to call any of them and say, hey, I need some time. We need to talk. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to learn. I'm sitting here, somebody, 22 years experience, hundreds of units, millions of dollars in collected rent, and I don't know everything. Shoot, I don't even know half. So having these people that I can lean on and call is an amazing feeling. So. I am sorry if you feel that way about my channel. I am not going to stop. Um, if you don't like it, I'm sorry again. Uh, I'm going to be who I am. But yeah, one rental at a time is not me. Uh, it's all of us. And, and hopefully you hear me and hopefully you hear me say we a lot because it is all of our channel. Um, so again, yeah. And again, the last thing to kind of wrap it up with is if you want to change your financial future, you want to take advantage of the winter is coming. 
Uh, you need to get the course, how to get started one rental at a time, 319 bucks, get access to a private Facebook group that we talk to weekly. I'll talk to at 9 a.m. Uh, my millionaires interact with you there. Uh, it's amazing to see those folks in there answering questions. You'll be networking with other doers, not other people sitting on the couch talking about it. It is a positive place. Again, one of the things that most of you get wrong about my rules. Where is it? This one here, my seven ORAT rules is actually number seven. You don't audit your personal network. You've got to get around other people that are doing the things you were doing. Yeah. So, okay, folks, we're going to go to the top. We're going to say hi to everybody comes in. If you want to jump the line, put in a super chat. That way YouTube gets paid and my channel gets seen by more people. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Uh, what's up, fam? Love their daily news. Your macroeconomics paints a very unbiased picture. Thank you. Awesome team. Sunny. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. What do you think of mobile homes as rentals? See 70K homes that own land too. In the middle of some neighborhoods with existing homes, they aren't junk. Decent area. New to real estate investing. Um, again, I've never done mobile home, mobile home investing. Uh, let me check. I thought I put that in this book. Let me see. I forget what's in here. Nope, maybe not. Nope, not in here. Um, I know there are some very successful uh, real estate investors who do only mobile homes. Always do mobile homes with land. To your question, Jeff. A couple things about mobile homes, again, is somebody hasn't done them but has talked about it a lot. They're not, um, they're not bought with 30-year mortgages, which actually could be a benefit. If, you were, if I was going to be a mobile home investor, I would probably get seller financing all the time because you can't finance them with 30-year mortgages. They're, they're, dip, they're, not a, they're, not, they're just not financed the same way. Um, but yeah, they can work. I, I know... I know plenty of people uh, that buy uh, mobile homes. Um, Alex, I'll have to look it up. Uh, there's a guy I follow out of, um, I think he's out of Georgia, that only does mobile homes. I've had him on my channel a couple of times. I think it can work, uh, but you have to understand, uh, you have to have the land, so good call there. Don't lease land. Uh, you have to understand financing is very different, so go figure that out. And then what I would do is network. I would probably reach out to some private Facebook groups that do mobile home investing because there's a, probably a couple of things to check for that I'm not understanding. Like I think mobile homes built before like 1987 are done this way and after 87 that way. But again, I'm not an expert. Never bought one, never owned one, still don't own one, may never own one. They're not really big in Fresno. Um, but yeah, it can work, but just do, do the work, do the homework, network with other mobile home investors. Every time you hit a like button, an angel gets its wings. Oh, we only have 28 new angels. So, folks, if you're watching still, uh, please hit the like button. Let's give some angels their wings. Um, that is funny. Oh, we got a $10 super chat. Let's see what uh, it's all about. Oh, the lumberjack. Get the new Audible book from Mike, narrated by Dion. You never know what story may save you from a major mistake, give you a better way to handle a problem, or at least inspire and encourage you. Uh, Matt, thank you very much for this. Uh, that is well done. Again, I want to make very, very clear. This book, this labor of love, this struggle was done for you. I knew. And I have said repeatedly, repeatedly, that five, the first three to five years suck. They're slow. You have no idea if it's going to work. I held on to Gary Keller's book for seemingly five years. His page and a half, his real estate millionaire, whatever he called them, a millionaire playback or whatever he called them. I said, we can do better. I found 15 amazing different stories. I have no problem saying when you read this book, you won't like every story. That's okay. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to find the three, the four, the five that you will read and reread, or in this case, have Dion 
whisper sweet nothings in your ear as you listen and listen and listen. So can't thank Dion enough. Thank you for that, Matt. Where are we going? Uh, CNBC posted a video yesterday talking about 80% of mortgages under 4%. They said people aren't moving. I was like, man, Mike called this months ago. Laugh out loud. Crazy to see mainstream talking about it now. Yeah, I am I am pretty good at this. I I call things relatively early. I frankly call stuff early enough where other people make fun of me. And then a couple of months later, I'm right. And then those people who made fun of me, they don't come back. They never apologize. It does happen. But yeah, it's it's uh you know, the one thing you get as somebody who has an actual economic degree, kind of what they beat into you in school, is you realize that the economy and consumers specifically are nothing more than a big school of fish. If you can figure out where the school of fish are going, it gets pretty easy. Sometimes the school of fish are spooked. They see a shark and they dart left. A la June. Big school of fish saw 6% mortgages and freaked out. Called it. Nailed it. Told you July 20th would be a horrific date. It was because of the June data. Folks, winter is going to suck. Housing market is going to freeze. We, we will get to 7% 30-year mortgages, I suspect. Guess. And again, based on the math I did this morning, we might see 8. Ouch. Ouch. But again, if you are part of my course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time, you have a focused buy box, you are doing daily discipline, you are meeting two new people a week, you are telling everybody what your buy box is, you are willing to write 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 offers, you're willing to follow up every two weeks on deals, you are willing to talk to brand new people and new agents, you are going to do potentially the best deal of your life. The beauty about the housing market freezing, there's one very beautiful thing, and it is why I am vibrating with excitement. It is why I will tell you that Olivia and I, on a micro level, are going to have an amazing year. Because as the inventory retreats, as buyers get priced out more and more, as recession talks get louder and louder, as people get afraid, there goes 2%. There goes 2%. I'm going to keep doing the work. I am going to keep writing amazing offers. I'm going to keep looking for sellers with equity, and I'm just going to crush it. It's going to be amazing. Most people will sit on their ass and wish they did something. I am going to look at my market every day. I'm going to write offers every week. And eventually, I will get a yes answer. The time that is the next two years, one rental at a time students, followers should clean up. Now, it won't be immediate. We will have to write offers and follow up and do all these things. But if you are consistent, if you believe, if you are part of our private Facebook group and you see others winning, it will keep you motivated. Again, rule number seven. Why? So the Facebook group that comes with the course for free, again, I've admitted it many times. I created it as an FAQ spot. I get asked the same question over and over. Why not have an, an FAQ spot? It has now become the spot where amazing people can watch others do the work, win, and get motivated and stay motivated. Real estate investing in a down market is about staying motivated. And one rental at a time will help you do that. So I am very excited. Oh, Wah Will. <coughs> Found a seller willing to do sub two. Price is high, but still cash flows. Do you think it makes sense to do the deal like this in this market? Again, Wah Will, I have yet to do a sub two deal. Uh, Pace Morby is the guy I follow for that. Ty is the guy that added, uh, he has stuff in my course for this. If the numbers make sense, you know, here's the deal. Doing a deal... Sub two that cash flows sounds cool, but again, is it a great deal? If my market, for example, is 10% yield, but I found a sub two deal at five, I don't do that deal. 
I'm only doing great deals. I think sub two is amazing and can produce great life-changing deals. But hear me now, all sub two deals are not great deals. Let me say that again. All sub two deals are not great deals. So again, is it a great deal? Do you, you know, do you and the seller click because you, you know, you're in this together until you can get them out or sell? Maybe, maybe I would do a sub two deal if I clicked with the seller. We've had all the conversation uh, and it's a great yield. I would do it. But again, one last time, just because it is a sub two deal does not make it a great deal. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Rolled in. Good morning. How are you? Persona, good morning. How are you? Nathan, good morning. Layla, good morning. Tyler. <coughs> T- tenant got me a $1,200 fine for broken glass at pool. They paid rent, but not, not a dime of fine. Do you file evictions? <coughs> um, potentially, uh, there is a process, t- Tyler, so I would make sure you work with an attorney. Um. There's a process, so uh, it's going to be probably a longer process because, again, evictions are based on rent, not on extras. So um, you have to work with an attorney. You have to file. You have to document this, that, the other. Uh, They're clearly on the hook for it. Um, So eventually you could do it, but it's going to be a longer process. Again, I am not an attorney. I do not pretend to be one, uh, but I can tell you it will not be a straightforward eviction because uh, all evictions are based on rent, not other things like repairs or fines. But yeah, talk to an attorney, start the clock, start the paperwork, do all that. John, how you doing, man? I appreciate you. Thank you. Vic, uh, Victor, so you think a depression can't occur. You say every record-breaking stats, just curious to know how bad things have to get for a depression to happen. So again, we have to, you know, people like to use these scary words. I'm seeing more and more folks. In fact, I think it was, I talked yesterday, I think it was Interactive Brokers CEO or chairman. He talked about a depression coming. So there are people that think about an economic depression coming. Um, I think a depression is coming to the housing market. Uh, my number is 50% crash in transactions is a depression. Uh, I think a housing depression pulls the economy into a recession. Uh, There is actually a technical definition of a depression from memory. This is only from memory. uh, Well, while a recession is two quarters of negative GDP growth, a uh, depression, I believe, is eight quarters or two years of negative growth. I believe it is a cumulative uh, GDP growth of 10 percent drop negative. Um, And I I think. I don't know about the employment numbers, but unemployment would certainly have to be over 15%. So yes, I do not believe an economic depression is coming, at least not in the short term. Uh, I think a housing depression is right around the corner. Housing depression makes up 15%. You know, housing makes up 15% of our GDP uh, in a collective year. If housing goes down in half or goes down 30%, that'll, that'll pull the country into a recession. So a depression from an economic perspective is 8 to 12 quarters of negative growth. It is significant cumulative negative drop, and it is a massive jump in unemployment. I don't see any of those coming. My opinion, I'm wrong all the time. Maybe maybe a depression, maybe we're in a depression now. Certainly doesn't feel like a depression, but maybe, don't know. Uh, Chris, Mike, you are in contract. Uh, Mike, are you in contract on any deals? If not, how long has it been since your last deal? Uh, the last deal I did was about 12 months ago. It was a duplex. Um, yeah, I'm not in contract on a deal now. I've probably written 35 offers in the last, like written offers, 35 offers in the last two months. Yeah, maybe, maybe 10 weeks, so two and a half months. I've talked to. 20 agents about listings that are getting long in the tooth. So I'm doing the work, but uh, I won't do a good deal. No good deals for me. 
I've got the capital. I could do cash. I could do this. I could do that. Uh, I am still looking at the ADU. We did get an approval for that. That that could potentially be 150 to 200 grand. So uh, the ADU was the thing I was looking at, but I'm still very annoyed, very annoyed, very, very annoyed that the lovely state of California and our king who wants more affordable housing mandates that every new structure, including ADUs, has solar. Why am I annoyed? A, I didn't know. Shame on me. It's it's in the rules. I should have looked it up. So that's on me. Two, it's uh, sixteen to it's between sixteen and twenty five thousand bucks in added expense that I wasn't budgeting for. And most importantly, it will get me no return. None, zero. Uh, I've talked to ten people, maybe twelve people that I know and respect in my market. And I won't get a dime more of rent. And that annoys me. So I'm not sure that I will do my ADU. I haven't decided. Part of me wants to do one just because I've said I will. But I'm not sure I want to spend 20 grand for nothing. The reason I bring this up in deals is if I don't need that 200 grand, which I put on the side, I probably get more aggressive and write more offers. I go from writing 35 offers to 50 or 60. Uh, but yeah, this is all about writing offers, following up. I don't expect to get anything until Thanksgiving. Uh, I've been doing this a long time. I will probably have to follow up six, seven, eight times. Uh, there will probably be deals that I want that go into contract and come off. I keep telling you guys, it's all about the follow up, follow, follow through, daily tracking. Same stuff. You same stuff I tell you. I'm doing so. Yeah, the last deal I got was a duplex about a year ago. Actually, uh, two two houses on one lot. They actually uh, face different uh, streets, which I really love. Um, yeah, I'd do that deal again. Um, yeah, that was my last deal. Yeah. Amazing. Good morning. We love your course. Never seen a person give so much, so little. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Sean and Wendy. God is amazing. Yes, yes, he is. Thank you very much. Thank you for being part of it. Um, yeah, appreciate you. Raul. Hi, Michael. My cousin had a 30-year fixed rate of 3% on his primary home. He decided to refi into a five-year arm. Wow. 1.875. Wow. In 2021. Curious if you think that was a stupid or smart move. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, maybe. Maybe it was a genius move. I have no idea what his plans are for the property. If he's If he's out in less than five years. Sounds great. I have no idea what is, uh, how much, how many points he paid. Um, no idea. Uh, for me, I buy properties only with 30 year debt. I have all of my apartments and off. I spent a year and nine months getting all of my offices and apartments off of 25 year am five year fixed rate uh, debt. That was, a, that was a Herculean effort. So I have no interest rate risk, zero. So I, I wouldn't do it, but that doesn't mean it was stupid. I have no idea. It's not for me that much I know, but maybe it was a great move. No idea. No idea. I won't judge. I won't judge. Folks, if you do something and it's the right for you and you feel good about it, congratulations. My opinion shouldn't matter. I don't know. No idea wrong. Sorry. Ninja. Ninja vanish. Uh, we don't deserve you and your guests. Thank you for everything you do. Oh, that was really nice of you. Thank you, Ninja. I like that. I like that. Ninja Vanish. That's cool. Roldan, Nathan, Paul V. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really, I literally watch your videos every day that have a ton of understanding of the real estate world around me. I appreciate all your hard work. Great. I appreciate it. It doesn't feel like work to me, man. It's, you have no idea what it's like to talk to, you know, these amazing, amazing givers. All of them go givers. All of them routinely tell us that this is an hour they look forward to. You know how awesome that is? Just so cool. So cool. So awesome. Can you explain seller financing in a simple way? What are the pros and cons? Do you use a realtor or an attorney to do these deals? Could you do this as a lease to purchase? Uh, I could try. Uh, there's a lot in that question. So uh, you certainly could do this as a lease to purchase. But again, I've never done that. I'm not your guy. 
Uh, I think Ty and I are talking about doing something like that is a Saturday deep dive. Uh, in California, uh, you certainly can have an attorney write them up or an agent. If you're using a licensed agent, uh, good news, seller financing is on the state uh, CAR form. CAR stands for California Association of Realtor. So seller financing is not this unheard of thing. It's right there on the legal purchase agreement. So it's standard. Um, but you can also do them via escrow or title, at least in California. In some states, you have to go through an attorney. So again, it's it's not the the uh, T's and C's are not the hard part. You will have to go through escrow or title or an attorney based on the state you are in. And it has to be a legally binding doc because you're going to get a trust deed and a note, at least in California. It may be different in other states. Uh, but seller financing is very simple. You are basically turning the seller into the bank. I don't know how else to explain it. If you are comfortable going to the bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, JP Morgan, Rocket Mortgage, Better Mortgage, Matt the Mortgage Guy, Convoy, Velocity Mortgage, insert seller name. That's the same thing. So simply speaking, seller becomes the bank. That's probably the simplest way I could put it. Pros and cons. Cons, I guess go there first. Um, seller takes risk, just like banks. That's why every seller financing deal I've ever done takes time, relationships. They have to trust you. If they don't trust you, they aren't doing the deal. Con. Not every seller can do one. I am spending a thousand, almost a thousand bucks a month. I think it's eight hundred and fifty bucks a month mailing this card, housing crash coming. To owners with six, fifth, I don't know, is it fifty or sixty percent equity? I forget. Why? Because if you have five percent equity, you're not a candidate. So cons. Lots of you look at the MLS. I would guess, just random ass guess. 70% of MLS listings don't qualify. They don't have the equity. What's another con? Uh, they take time. Uh, you know, you've got to have, you got to understand them. Um, they're not for everybody. Con, con, con. I'm sure there are other cons that are escaping me at the moment. Pros. I can pay a higher price. Pro, seller has to pay less taxes. It's called an installment sale. Talk to a CPA. Uh, seller uh, maintains income, removes headaches. Seller gets rid of a problem property. Yeah. Seller financing is not available on most properties. That's why you have to write lots of offers. It is very, very rare for a listing to say seller will finance. It happens. It'll happen more and more in the winter, right? Because winter, you know, winter transactions will crash. But there's a lot of opportunities out there. And again, you don't have, they don't have to be listed. Network, grow, tell people. I am marketing all of these postcards that I'm sending out monthly. None of the properties, at least to my knowledge, are listed. They're all off market. So hopefully that helps. Kevin, thank you for spending the time, your efforts, post videos. I just finished reading Run Rental Live Time book. It's uh, in one sitting. Wow. Good for you. I did not write it in one sitting. <laughs> I didn't edit it in one sitting. Uh, so that's impressive. Once I will be the foreigner voice on one rental. Oh, that's nice. Uh, good Mike. Good morning, Mike and others. Thanks for the content. You are welcome, Scott. Drew, uh, your videos guided me back to real estate investing, and I now have two units cash flowing in route to my third unit now. Dude, that's why you do this stuff. Again, when you're trying to build a legacy that lives for 50 years, you just keep doing the daily work. I, I happen to have a superpower that I didn't know, focus daily work and having fun. So congratulations, congratulations. Scott, after Thatch's video, I was curious how your ADU is going 
then what is causing delay on permit side? I thought King Newsom passed a law to make ADUs easier. Where's the gap in my understanding? Um, so yes, King Newsom did issue them, but each city is adopting the rules at different speeds. Uh, my biggest issue is the property that I picked unknowingly, Scott, is in this little part of town that is called a historic district. That was a mistake. Never try to do an ADU in a historic district. I now have tentative approvement. Approvement? What is it called? A, a, a permit. A tentative permit. I am, I am now deciding if I want to move forward. Uh, as I said earlier, I got hit with a surprising, let's round it to 20000 bucks in costs that I don't know that I want to absorb. Right, I could take I I've I've allocated two hundred thousand bucks. Let's just talk real numbers. I took two hundred thousand dollars, I put it on the side. Thou shalt not touch. That is my eight that is my future ADU money. I get hit with King Newsom. I don't understand California. California wants more affordable homes. I am willing to buy build some affordable I am willing to build fifteen to twenty ADUs. Then King Newsom says, oh, by the way, not only do we want to do this, but we want to get off fossil fuel, so let's add extra cost to ADUs. Every ADU in California has to have solar. It's not going to work. If you're going to put an ADU in the backyard and you've got trees every year all over the place, why the hell would you want solar? It's not going to work, but you have to do it. So stuff like that annoys me. Government in in intervention annoys me. Adding cost without revenue annoys me. So, Scott, there is a good chance that sometime between now and the end of the year, I decide to give Gavin Newsom the middle finger. I will take that two hundred grand and either buy something cash and, and, and actually get a better return. I could pay off some low mortgages. I don't know what I'm going to do. Right now, that two hundred grand is sitting there like a lump of rocks. And... It is all about the solar panels. I am annoyed that I'm being asked to spend 20 grand and get no return. That does not sit well with me. I could use that 20 grand in lots of other places. So that's the problem, at least my situation. That's my problem. Uh, Sky or Ski, maybe. Uh, can't wait for Vegas. That should be fun. Yep. And what he's refer he or she is referring to there is. If we get to 50,000 subscribers, so like, subscribe, comment. Do me a favor, share the daily financial news with your Facebook group. Invite people to watch them. Uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, the sooner we get to 50,000, 50, the sooner we, uh, we have an event. That will be fun. Marco, that's why I like your channel, diversity of your experts and their own personality. I connect pretty much with all of them. Keep up the great work. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Just bought the book. I just sent a DM in one rental at a time page for my postcard. Thank you for everything. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Afro capitalist, congratulations. What he is referring to, or she, is this. So again, I sit here every day doing this for you. Something I do to track performance is, hey, if I help you in any way, let me know. Get me your address, as Afro capitalist just did, and I will mail you a card. And also, what I do is I give you a shout out on my daily financial news. Uh, you give, you know, congratulations. Thank you for the follow. Do the work. Awesome. So it's fun. We get to do, we get to, we get to change lives together. It's pretty cool. Just bought my brother-in-law a copy of your book. Oh, thank you very much. That's so nice. He is looking to join the one rental world. We had been landlords for several years before I read your book and I learned something new each time I read it. Wow. That's amazing. That is so awesome. That's, that's nice to hear. Thank you very much. The supply destruction is what is criminal. Uh, criminal? I'm not sure if it's criminal. It is certainly unfortunate. Good morning, Sheena. How are you? Jeffrey, how are you? Paula, good morning. How are you? Sean and Wendy, how are you? We enjoy your channel. So many different personalities. When you go back and listen again, you think, wow, I didn't hear that before. Thank you for the amazing community. Uh, Sean and Wendy, that is awesome to hear. Um, that's what I'm trying you know, that was my vision for one rental at a time. The brand and the channel was, it does become a community. Uh, it is it's just, 
I sit here every day looking at who I get to speak with, and I'm just honored and thrilled that these millionaires, these these millionaires that I didn't know they weren't in my they, they were none of them were in my LinkedIn profile. They all now are just so happy to talk for an hour, do three topics, and just give, give, give. Man, so awesome, so awesome. Uh, Jeffrey, if people think 40 a mortgage is okay, then why not 50 or 60? The basic problem is that prices are too damn high because the fiat currency is being devalued. Okay, during the 08 crash, da, da, da. Okay. Mike, we live in a small community of Gulf Breeze, Florida. Okay. Uh, first, we were discouraged because we were small, under 10K. Okay. But now, after listening to you and a few of your experts, realize we're blessed uh, on your buy box. That is awesome. Yeah. The, the, the power of one rental at a time anchors on a buy box. It's just anchors on a buy box. Real estate investing offers a million ways to make millions of dollars. And that actually causes most of the problem. Most investors that struggle, struggle because they aren't focused. And the buy box is the answer. Buy box is step one of my course, how to get started one rental at a time. It is what you look at every day. It's your 20 minutes of daily discipline. It is how you network. It is how you move forward. So. I am glad that uh, I am glad that the message has resonated, Sean and Wendy. Thank, thank you very much. Big question: How many characters does Dion play in the Audible book version? That's a good question. Let me know when you listen, <laughs> Sean and Wendy. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dion. That's pretty amazing. Good morning from Paris, France. Sean Irvin traveling the world. Shout out, Sean. Thank you very much. Have uh, I've been, so it's funny. So I've been to Paris and I always like funny stories. Um, so at least when I was in Paris, I believe it was 1999 because I was there for a Y2K project. So I, I was there. Um, I was, I was there Halloween, Halloween, 1999. So October 31st, Halloween, they shut down the Sean Gilles, however the hell you say that. Uh, and all of these roller skaters and bikers, bicyclists came through. So that's fun fact number one. And then number two, a lot of amazing food in Paris. But the one that I remember, this is going to shock you, or at least it still shocks me. Perhaps the best chicken wings I've had in my entire life were at a McDonald's. I don't know if McDonald's still does it, but if they do, and you're ever in Paris, the best chicken wings. I ever had were at a freaking McDonald's in Paris, France. I've never seen, I've been to McDonald's around the world. It's kind of a safe place to go when you travel the world. I've never seen chicken wings anywhere else but Paris, France. It was crazy. It was crazy, crazy. Uh, I'm a sub two student. I agree. Not all sub two deals are great or even worth pursuing. Awesome. Uh, Johnny, good morning, Drew. Got to have yield and terms. Yep. 12 quarters is the depression. Thank you. I may have said uh, eight. It's 12. And more than 10 points. Yeah, 10 point decline in GDP. Yep. Ooh, here's a question. What if unemployment doesn't go up and we and the Fed has to keep raising rates? We got the positive real rates. Oh. <sighs> I believe at the extremes, which is where we are today, meaning low rates, low unemployment, there will absolutely be a ripple effect. The question inside your comment or the question in your question is how long? So said a different way, I think unemployment is going up. Uh, I also think unemployment will go up much slower than people think. I think people like Kathy Wood expects unemployment to go up this year meaningfully. I don't see it. I think unemployment may have a lead lag. Uh, Millennial Mike uh, and I did a review of Milton Freeman. If you guys don't know who Milton Freeman is, do yourself a favor and uh, look him up on YouTube. He is perhaps 
the most influential economist to date. There are some videos that Millennial Mike found and I reacted to of Milton Freeman talking in the 1970s. Go watch those. He talks about the lead lag delay of the extremes. And I could be wrong, but I believe one of the videos we talked about, and hopefully will be up in the next couple of days, Milton Freeman talks about the, when you start raising rates, there's a six to 18 month delay. So uh, rates are going up and I think unemployment is going up. I just don't think it will be as fast as people expect. That's kind of what I think. So one more question. I got to get ready for the my students in our private Facebook groups. What are your thoughts uh, that we are in deglobalization trend and the cost of capital will continue to increase for several years? So again, there's kind of two thoughts in there. I think we are absolutely in a world of deglobalization. I think it is actually net positive. I think the United States uh, got uh, a little bit too dependent on people that don't like us. And that is dumb, stupid. Uh, that will undoubtedly lead to inflation going forward. Uh, we, we pay our employees more than China does. It's a fact. So I think as we bring more manufacturing home, which I, again, think long-term is very, very positive. I think it will have short-term pain. It just is what it is. Uh, so I think it's a good thing. I think we have to make, like, the fact that pharmaceuticals and uh, PPE and all this stuff that was made by people who don't like us is a problem. Uh, I think it will lead to inflation. And then to your second point, or I don't know, third point, um, I think the cost of capital stays higher than people think. I don't think cost of capital keeps increasing. I think there's a, uh, what's called a terminal rate uh, that we get to. And then lastly, let's not forget, Sean, that we are the reserve currency of the world. Uh, I actually fully expect as the Japanese yen crashes, as the British pound or sterling crashes, as the euro crashes, as the Chinese yuan crashes, blah, 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 continue, continue, continue. More people will come to the United States because our Fed funds rate will be at 4% very soon. And we will have plenty of capital keeping rates lower than you might expect. So I don't see this rampant terminal rate running forever. I don't see it. I think uh, we will get to some rate where foreign capital will just love it and come here. I think we will make more stuff here, which is awesome. Uh, and I think wage inflation will continue and it's actually why I'm calling the housing market flat for five years, because I think deglobalization leads to manufacturing, leads to job creation, which leads to wage inflation. It's kind of how I see the dominoes falling. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed today. 167 people f watching and 65 angels, folks. As Dion told us, every time you hit the thumbs up button, an angel gets its wings. So far, we have 65 brand new angels. Hit that button. Like, subscribe, comment. And have an amazing Saturday. Bye-bye.